Let's add some custom villagers to Minecraft. Alright, we found ourselves back in Intelligent once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom villagers to Minecraft. Now, this has actually changed in 119 compared to 1182. So let's just jump in and see what we can do. So in our tutorial mode package, we're going to right click new package called a villager. And then inside of there, we're going to make one new class and that's going to be the mod villagers class. Now, first and foremost, we need three different methods here. The first one is going to be the uh, public static void or register villagers method. And that is going to do the following. It's going to say tutorial mod dot logger dot debug and then just saying registering villagers or and then tutorial mod dot mod id and then we'll immediately call this in the tutorial mod class over here so mod villagers dot register villagers and this is once again needed even though it only outputs this particular thing this is needed so that the static fields that we're going to introduce in just a moment are properly initialized otherwise they won't load properly this is why we need this even though it doesn't do anything or it looks like it only outputs something it actually does a little bit more this is just some java weirdness in this case now the second method that we're going to need is the public static point of interest type this is very important that we use this one right here from net Minecraft world poi so just tap to autocomplete and we're going to call this the register poi method this takes in a string parameter called name and a block parameter called block. Now, let's actually go here, alt and enter to import this net Minecraft block. There we go. And here we want to return point of interest type helper. This one right here from fabric API dot register with a new identifier passing in tutorial mod dot mod ID comma name. And then after the first closing parentheses, we're going to add one one. Then we're going to make an immutable set dot copy of there we go and then we're going to say block dot get state manager dot get states and then three closing parentheses and that is it now this might look absolutely insane what does this do well our villager needs a point of interest where it can get a job from and this basically registers this particular point of interest with the block that we're passing in here and it's going to make sure that every state that this block can take is actually registered properly because, of course, we've seen this previously, right, in the example of the Tanzanite lamp block, for example, if we were to make this our point of interest, then the Boolean property here could be lit true or lit false. But we want either one of those to be a point of interest for our villagers. That's the general idea here. And then the ticket count just means how many villagers can actually work at that point of interest and then search distance just as the distance basically that the villager will search for this. Now we also need to add a villager profession. So this is going to be a public static villager profession. This one right here, register profession. It's also going to take in a string name parameter and then it's also going to take in a registry key of type point of interest type. This one right here called type. And this one looks a little bit crazier, but we're going to be fine. So this is going to return registry.register. Once again, making sure that you choose the correct registry class here from net U Minecraft util registry registry, not the one from Java, very important. And here we're going to say registry. You can see this one would be the wrong one. We want this one, registry.villager profession. And then a new identifier, tutorial mod, that mod ID, passing in the name. After the first closing parentheses, we're going to call villager profession builder, though. We want the profession builder. There you go. Dot create dot ID. Once again, making a new identifier, calling it tutorial mod mod ID comma name. And then after two closing parentheses dot workstation, passing in the type. And then we're also going to say work sound. And we're just going to use sound events dot integer villager armor that's fine and then after one closing parentheses dot build and then ending it with a semicolon so you can see the builder over here is of course a builder pattern so you have a, you know plenty of things that you can basically put in here you can specify the job site secondary job site harvestable items so there's a quite a few things that you can do but this is i believe the minimum you don't i don't think you need a sound in this case but you know supplying a sound also is pretty Cool. Right, so those are the three methods that we need. All of the code is, of course, as always available to you in the description below. Get up a pass for an individual just as well. So let's then add a public static final. And this is going to be a point of interest type in this case. And that's going to be the jumpy poi. So this is going to be equal to register poi. It's going to be called jumpy underscore poi. And this is going to be mod blocks dot jump jumpy block. There we go. So our jumpy block is basically going to be the point of interest for 
the villager profession that we're going to add in in one second so this is going to be the public static final villager profession there we go and that's just going to be called the jump master i didn't have any other ideas i want to be honest here we're going to call the registered profession over here calling it the jump master and then we're going to make a registry key dot of so this one right here passing in a registry dot point of interest type key exactly this one it already sometimes it already suggests this to us and a new identifier tutorial mod dot mod id and then calling this jumpy and then here jumpy underscore poi and then ending it with a semicolon and what's very important is that the name given here is the same as the name given here and that should pretty much be all that we need to do now this is it for the classes however we actually need to add a particular tag otherwise it will not work now this is very important once again so we need to go into our data folder minecraft tags and then not in the blocks but in the tags folder we want to right click new directory and this is going to be called point underscore of underscore interest underscore type extremely important that this is written correctly make sure that it is and then inside of here we need to make a new file and this is going to be called the acquirable underscore job underscore site dot json this once again make sure this is written exactly correctly otherwise it will not work if you need to have the spelling laid out for you it is available in the github repository and in the gist as well so you can copy it from there or compare it from there so make sure that this is correct now the contents of this just basically a completely normal tag in this case and just pointing to the jumpy point so this always points to the point of interest type not the actual profession so that's very important for the profession we also need to add a texture so that's going to be under assets tutorial mod textures in a new directory called entity and then inside of there another new directory called villager and then inside of there another new directory called profession and then i'm just going to copy over the jump master png over here so this basically is just a recolored version of the armor, I believe, I just made in my, you know, Kauten blue color, basically. And that is pretty much all that there is to it there. One last thing, of course, villagers usually have some sort of trades and those trades we can basically add by doing the following. So you can do it in your on initialize method. You can also make a new method inside of here. I believe this should also work. So we can just say public static void register trades. And we're going to do the following. We're going to use the trade offer helper, this one right here. We're going to say reg dot register villager trade offers. We're going to say jump master over here. So this is going to be the villager profession. The level, that, so then we need to supply an integer of the level that this has, needs to have. And then we can say factories. And you can see it's a consumer of a list of factories. So we're just going to autocomplete this with tab. And then we're just going to make curly brackets over here. And then here we can add stuff to it. So this is how it's going to look like. It's going to be factories.add. We then need entity random. You can see once again, this is the factory that it requires basically. So we can autocomplete this again. And here we want to make a new trade offer. And in this trade offer, actually everything goes that we need. So we can close this with a semicolon. And then we need the following. We need two new item stacks. So that's going to be new item stack. Let's say for example of items.emerald. And let's just say it's going to be like three emeralds and then a new item stack. This is going to be what we're going to get. So let's say mod items dot eggplant. Why not? So we're going to get maybe something like five eggplants. And then we also want to supply the max uses, the experience, the villager is going to get and then the price multiplier over here. And that should be pretty much what we need. There we go. So this is one example. Also, once again, you can get this very easily from the GitHub repository or the gist. If you want to change the level of that is required for this particular villager to offer this trade, you just change this one right here. And otherwise, I can suggest going into the trade offer. So middle mouse button, click on this. And you can see there's quite a few things over here that you can use. So there's, you know, different constructors in this case. There's actually one where you have two items that you have to sell to the villager. And then you get one item from it. This is usually usually done when you have something that is enchanted usually right right so this is probably the best way to look at it and then what we can just do is we can just call this right here as well the so mod villagers dot register trades and there we go now this should be everything that we need to add a new custom villager so let's go into the game and see if it works
or it finds us back in Minecraft and let's just add a villager and let's see if he's going to take this particular job over here. And there we go, the job has been taken. So I, now I can right click it and you can see the trade that we've added here is in there. And so there's one little thing in the en underscore json file that we still have to add, but overall that should be all that we need. So that is pretty much how easy it can be to add a custom villager Minecraft. Right, so I've also added the translation over here. It needs to be entity Minecraft Villager Jump Master. I'm not 100% sure why it needs to be under Minecraft. Uh, it is probably because of the way that we're registering it, but that is just basically how, what the translation is going to be. But that should then work, and then everything should be totally fine. Well, and that concludes this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. I'll see you all in the next tutorial. So, yeah.